It's been a few months since I explored whether you should buy a house now or wait, and over three quarters of a million people watched that video. With interest rates climbing really high and all those who fixed on cheap 1.5% mortgages, they've been in shock this year since realizing that a lot of people are not able to afford monthly repayments on their home with the current new mortgage rates. Now that the government has stopped partially destroying the economy with dodgy budgets and time has naturally progressed on, what is happening to the property market this year? What are we seeing? And I'll ask the same question again. Is now a good time to buy a house? Firstly, we need to explore interest rates. It's really important to touch on the fact that over 2 million people this year are coming off of their nice, cheap two-year fixed mortgage, which from the era of cheap lending meant a lot of us really stretched our affordability. The problem is now, if you have a home, for example, worth 250,000 pounds, and let's say that your mortgage is 200K of that, at 1.5%, you'd be paying about 690 pounds a month over 30 years. But then with interest rates expected to be at about 4% for the foreseeable future, that is almost 1,000 pounds a month. So we've all been used to this cheap credit and it's not uncommon to have also stretched our budgets further with low interest PCP loans on fancy cars. For example, that 300 pounds a month you're spending on an nice BMW might be needed for the extra upcoming mortgage payments if you need to come off of a fix and change a new product this year. There's been this general nervousness this year about how families weather the storm ahead with the higher interest rates, where there literally is, in some scenarios, not much cash left at the end of the month, especially when you factor in everything increasing around food bills, energy costs, fuel, and more, which to be fair, has come down in price a little bit since its peak, but it's still very, very high. Now, I recently moved out of London into a bigger house very recently, hence having loads of boxes in the back previously, because this room is the dumping ground of all the boxes for the minute, but we managed to get a fix at 2.1% for five years. And when we actually applied for that back in June last year, we were actually looking at around 2.8%, but our mortgage broker found a deal that we think was accidentally left on the system and it was being pulled at midnight that day that we found it. So we were very lucky in terms of what we got because we effectively got the March interest rates last year in the middle of the year in June. And it was further well-timed because I'd been on a staff rate mortgage at Lloyd's on 0.1%, which is the base rate, or was the base rate back then, whilst having my flat in London. And I managed to hang on to that for a year after I left until they finally spotted it, and they were reversing my rate to the standard variable rate, which because it leapt up so much in 2022, it kept jumping from 3% to 4% to 5%, and somewhere I think it landed around 6%, which meant my monthly repayments were going from 300 pounds a month month, almost up to £1,000 a month. So what's the current state of the property crash right now, so it's called? Well, I'll be honest, the data is a little bit all over the place at the moment. There's no two sets of data that really add up as we've gone into 2023. And what I'm going to try and do is I'll show you some graphs that don't really agree with each other and I'll try and draw some kind of conclusions and thoughts. Firstly is the Halifax House Price Index. Now they're saying that the monthly change is up 1.1% from January to February at the start of 2023 meaning house prices went up just at the point where the year-on-year -year change was likely to go negative, signaling the start of the property crash. That's actually been caught in what is effectively a safety net at the last possible moment, meaning year-on-year -year growth has crept back up ever so slightly to 2% year-on-year. So I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're still in an upwards market year-on-year. -year. That being said, in the past quarter, prices did go down by 2.5%. Then also you've got to remember that being in an incredibly hot market that we've had, it did have to cool down at some point. So the real test now is whether that goes negative or if it stays slightly above flat, which is where Halifax is saying that we are right now. When you look at the past year, you can see prices coming down year on year in the blue line and then remaining relatively flat since the new year, giving it a little bit of stability, albeit at the new peak that we have in house prices right now. But then you look at the monthly change in the pink and it started to go negative towards the end of last year, which is quite a natural thing. It's very seasonal and we see this every year in the property market and it surged again into the new year. So there's nothing crazy different from what we've seen in previous years here. But then you look at Nationwide's house price index who are showing a completely different narrative. Now they're saying that house price growth is negative in February with a 0.5% month on month fall and 1.1% down year on year. So there are a few questions to ask here. Firstly, why do the two biggest lenders in the UK have quite different data that shows a difference of 2% in house prices year on year? Now, 
It's important to note that Nationwide and Halifax are using their own mortgage data. It's not national UK-wide data. So depending on the products they offer, the loan to value, the potential geographical skews as well, and the valuers that they use for house prices can cause these discrepancies. However, even though their narrative is different right now, it doesn't mean that either one of them is particularly right or particularly wrong. But what they do both align on is the fact that we've massively come down from a peak in the second half of 2022. And right now, things are relatively flat, about 1% either side of zero, so plus one to minus one. So when you look at it that way, their data appears to be more aligned with each other despite their different narratives. So when will the market drop? Well, we're at a really interesting point right now. Prices have started to come down by about three to 6% from the peak last year, but it's not quite enough to declare it in a property market decline as we're still around flat year on year, meaning on average prices haven't gone down, nor have they gone up from where they were at this time last year. But because prices have been trending down, we just need the next few months to start to see possibly the beginning of a drop in the property market. Now, I call it a drop because there's a difference between a drop and a crash. Now, these are two very different things. And I think the problem that we have is that we don't know when. Now, looking at this data from Built Place showing mortgages by purpose, up to the end of 2022, we haven't seen the drop in mortgages yet. Demand is still relatively strong, which would make sense why it's keeping the market somewhat propped up and so far it's not collapsed. And this is ultimately why we're seeing graphs like this from Halifax, where it started trending down and then it's kind of snaked back up. And with that demand, just keeping that upwards pressure for now. Looking at the March 2023 budget, what I've looked at here is the OBR report for the latest budget that Jeremy Hunt released in March. Now. They predict in central government that property prices will start to drop about 10% from the 2022 highs and property transactions are expected to drop 20% relative to their peak. Now, leading indicators from Halifax and Nationwide suggest that the house prices have already fallen by three to 6% between their peak in the middle of 2022 and February, 2023. On top of this, you've got low consumer confidence and the squeeze on real incomes and there's some kind of expectation of mortgage rates to stay somewhat high. It's contributing towards this fall in house prices and a reduction in just overall housing market activity. Now, this table here contains a ton of information, but focus your eyes on the residential property prices. The government believe with the Bank of England that prices will drop about 4.6% this year and a further 3.9% in 2024. And then we'll begin to see a modest growth from about 2025 onwards. But most importantly, over this six year forecast, they expect prices to still be up 10% factoring in the small dip in the market. Hence why buying a house for the long term means a lot of this won't really impact you greatly. If you buy now and find the perfect home, then it's not necessarily a bad thing. So let's explore interest rates and the collapsing banks are very recent. Now there are two key problems here. The first big problem is whether you should buy now, knowing that all of the predictions are showing a 10% drop, as in what's the point in buying now and risking negative equity? And secondly, are the interest rates because they're still high. Now, that is due to inflation, which means the Bank of England have to raise the bank rate to curb spiraling increases in costs by increasing the cost of things like lending and encouraging more people to save money. The government's latest forecast has been slightly amended from the 2022 forecast, but remains somewhat similar. Inflation should be back down to normal levels by the end of 2023. However, and sadly, they won't go negative. So prices won't get any cheaper of products and services. And this means banks will gain some composure and some stability and they'll help mortgage rates through the rest of this year. So it begs the question, what will happen to the bank rates that the Bank of England set? On this graph here in the budget report, the purple line is the most recent forecast. You can see here that rates still could go up to about 4.75%, meaning from today, there's still a little bit of room ahead to increase the bank rate, which means two things. Firstly, we get better interest on our savings, but then secondly, mortgage rates might still climb up a little bit further. But with all that being said, you might have seen in the news a lot of talk about Silicon Valley Bank or SVB, which collapsed very recently, a bank very popular in the tech sector where I work. Now, I know you're thinking, Matt, why does SVB have anything to do with trying to buy a house? Well, although SVB collapsed for very specific reasons of their own fault, it has caused a bit of a turmoil and a knock on confidence in the whole of the banking sector. Now, the UK banks also took a dip this month because of the knock on in the market confidence. For example, Lloyds went down almost 10% in the past month. Even HSBC, who bailed out SVB UK, 
to try and give some stability are also down a similar 9% in the past month. And then when Credit Suisse are having a hard time and taking a £44 billion bailout to avoid collapsing, as well as with fears of a chain reaction causing a banking crisis, this is just what we need right now, another once in a lifetime event. And because the markets are being a little bit spooked right now, the Bank of England are weighing up whether to stop and maintain the bank rate at around 4.25% rather than raising it further. They might even vote to not raise it and instead keep it at 4%. We'll have to see what happens there. And with inflation starting to come back down anyway, with the Bank of England trying to fight it for the past few months, and with the added turmoil of the banking sector, they might just keep everything where it is. Either way, this is a good thing. It means it brings stability to mortgage rates. And if you're either sat on a variable rate right now or coming off a fix soon and not sure what to do, at least the risk of it going higher is actually now quite low. The opportunity ahead. So if you're a first time buyer or a mover, what are your possible options going forward? Well, there's a few things that seem to be happening. Firstly, we know with high inflation and cost of living, consumer confidence is a lot lower with the Bank of England and the central bank predicting a 10% drop in the property market over the next two years. Secondly, we know that interest rates seem pretty much at their peak right now and can only begin to go down a bit before finding a new norm. Now, we won't have cheap 1% rates again, but you can rest a little bit easier knowing that it's not going to get higher and worse than where we are today. If you bought a house right now, let's look at the worst that could happen. If you buy a property for 200k and it goes down 10% to a value of £180,000, as long as your deposit is more than 10%, you won't dip into negative equity in terms of the mortgage. However, you would make a loss if for whatever reason you sold the house as you likely wouldn't get your deposit money back. But the intention is not to buy a house and sell it within two years. And if you've got a mortgage now, for example, a two year fix, even if it's a little bit higher right now, there's some comfort that all of the indicators are predicting that the rates will settle and be a little bit lower in two years than where we are today. The whole idea being that when you fix your mortgage in two years time, it should be even lower. So if you can manage it now, you should be able to definitely manage it in two years time when things are a bit more better. Then when you look at the five to six year view, your house is already pretty much worth above 200k again because you've got good equity and assuming that we stay somewhere between three and a half to four and a half percent on interest rates, on an average 250k house with a 10% deposit, that would be anywhere from £930 a month to £1,065 a month. It's not as good as the £745 a month you would have got back at 2%, but if you chill out on the PCP car finance, then you should be all right. We know from an affordability perspective that we're in a little bit of a peak right now, with mortgage payments taking up about 40% of take-home pay on average for first-time buyers. So thinking two years ahead, like we've seen before, this should dip down if we see a reduction in interest rates in the next two years. So if you can afford the monthly higher repayments, and to be fair, if you find a bit of a do it up a project and don't mind a bit of DIY renovation to add value in a house, even buying now, assuming you found your dream house, wouldn't destroy you financially. The headlines would be scary and there might be a slight dip in house prices, but you can weather that by either staying there for more than five years or doing some renovation to uplift the value of the property. And then in two years, you'll likely end up with more affordable monthly repayments anyway. And if you're remortgaging from a cheap fix that you're on at the moment, if you stretched your finances previously on the cheap fix, and now you're realizing that you can't quite afford the new interest rates, again, here, the question is that I would ask you, how do you weather the next two years? If it's your forever home, house prices dropping 10% doesn't really matter. The main concern here is cash flow. When you jump from say 2% to 4% interest rates on your mortgage. Firstly, speak to a broker to really assess your options and see whether a fix is even the right type of product right now. But I think the answer lies somewhere in trying to find a product that helps you through the next 24 months with a hope of fixing again in 2025 in two years time when rates are hopefully a little bit lower from the higher times right now. So whether that genuinely means getting rid of the PCP Range Rover Evoke on the drive or just accepting a slightly less amount of savings or disposable income for the next 24 months, right now there's some kind of stability. And yes, it's harder, but it's not impossible. Just do your research, be prepared, and know early on what your monthly repayments could be. So there you have it. It's not the best time to buy right now, but all the indicators are also showing that it's also not an absolute hard no if you're looking for your forever home right now. The news headlines might sound a bit scary. Some places still believe we're in for an almighty 40% reset, but I've been trawling through the tons of data for the past few months and I'm just not seeing any evidence of systemic problems or huge inbound crashes coming. 
With prices having surged 15 to 20% in the past two years alone, a 10% drop is actually quite modest. And we only need to lose about one to two years of progress at most if it went down 10%. And then it's back into the green as house prices grow a little bit more modestly, albeit from their new highs. Likewise in 2008, which was far worse than today, we really only saw a peak to trough drops of about 15 to 20% on average. So when you look at the facts and the figures and the data, it doesn't seem as dramatic. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this one here, which is exploring the 18 year property cycle in more detail and why property prices go round in cycles again and again. So click on here, check it out and please subscribe to the channel.